The problem is everybody, or at least in Silicon Valley, is solving upstream problems. They're trying to build easy tools that will scale well that your local VC wants to fund. They're building software tools, SaaS, B2B things. Problem is the world of manufacturing is fundamentally not a software problem at its root. The core reason to why we are building RangeView is because America needs RangeView. Hey man, welcome to RangeView, America's first cyber foundry in process. We are at our third facility now. It's the first time we've ever been zoned properly, uh, although for legal purposes that might be a joke. There's a cultural shift that has happened inside this country. The attitudes that built the great skylines of America have retired, receded. We need to move manufacturing over to America as soon as possible. Over here, we've got where the business started and some of its roots. We built custom harmonic drive gearboxes, for some context, this, this bad boy can hold 84 newton meters of torque, uh, which is insane. Similar strength to weight ratio as the Japanese manufactured harmonic drives that are in every single robot arm and optic system in the, in the world today. We have a mural over here from all the gearboxes that we exploded. We thought, well, at least according to McKinsey, that the reason why robots weren't everywhere was because they were too expensive. Then I tried to sell some robot arms into factories, and it was like trying to sell a toaster to a house without electricity. They just didn't have the infrastructure in place. These factory owners were not interested in paying for improvements to their technology. They were about to retire. It came to the realization for me that the solution to this was to build a new type of factory. Green grass, ground up, new everything. Not robots doing human jobs, robots doing robot jobs. We have looked at all the manufacturing technologies that exist in the world today. We've come across a foundry process, a very niche one called investment casting, that we have totally reinvented. Here's what we make, metal parts. Crazy stuff, a lot of these are military spares going on jet fighters, rockets, and things. So we 3D print a custom ceramic composite, pour molten metal into it, and do what we think is the most efficient way to put metal particles together. To get to that casting today, it's actually a technology stack that was invented in the 60s and earlier. But at the end of the day, we are flipping that on its head by printing the ceramic shell directly. Historically, it's so interesting. You start with wax because it's super cheap to mold. Then you build a ceramic investment slurry around it. Um, and so you're kind of stepping through these different materials. You're starting with polymer, you're cutting with a ceramic, and then you're finally getting to metal. And it works out super well because those are super cheap, super formable. And you get to use all these nice technologies. And a lot of the metal 3D printing guys, their theory is we'll go straight to metal. Printing technologies uh, in polymers and in ceramics have gotten so good, there's a whole bunch of opportunity to use those for the metal side as opposed to going direct to metal. So this is where we we are inventing a novel manufacturing technique. It starts in the material development lab. Yeah, what's up with the orange light? Yeah, so the orange light in here. Uh, we use photopolymers to make stuff. Blue light is actually what cures the plastic that we use, the composite that we manufacture. Uh, and we do it all in here in-house. In and here's an example of a part that we're making right now that I can show you. This is all ceramic composite. So this can take up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, molten metal. There's so many issues right now in investment casting. So many foundries have closed down. We're seeing this huge, huge over-demand for parts that are just not deliverable by foundries. There's a huge amount of interest from the DOD in actually building more investment casting capacity in our country. The Defense Logistics Agency reported that last year, half of our advanced fighter jets are grounded due to part shortages. That comes back to casting technology at the end of the day. There are no suppliers in the world casting anymore. It's extremely important that our process at the end of the day is less than a week turnaround to dropping it in your inbox. Everything's small, like I said, but this compared to where we were coming for, uh, from before, we were classic garage story. Uh, Range is actually named after the, the road that the garage was on. But yeah, full on sleeping on the ground and everything. One of the great things about working at Rangeview just in general is I think everyone is super, super, super competent at what they do. You never have to worry about um, working with people here for sure. Um, and that means people are also super, super sure of their ideas all the time. And you have plenty of disagreements and you know people will, will Very take well it all the way. The big problem is like, how do you take this brand new manufacturing technology, make it reliable enough and cheap enough to actually serve to customers? What are the simplest parts you can build for customers? What is the lowest order quantity? And like, start with that, make the technology work there. And then you learn so, so, so much by just delivering parts to customers. You know, serve customers with the technology as fast as we can, whether it's totally ready, whether we're losing money on every part, that's totally fine early days. Um, over time, we're getting more consistent, more accurate, and able to serve customers in a much better way. I see the larger geopolitical 
political issues that are forming in the world right now. Culture of America shifting as we become a service-based economy. People who are looking for the maximum amount of money for the minimal amount of work. People leaving with dreams of computer programming and outputting to society, getting their groceries 10 minutes faster. Things will continue to get worse if this is how our culture remains. Every day, the Rangeview team gets in here and fights for something. There needs to be a resurgence of people that are building real things. If there's one thing that I hope someone takes away from this video, it's that they see this going on and they're inspired to come and be a part of the rebuilding of America's industries. Thank you so much for watching the ninth and second to last episode of season one with Rangeview. Thank you to Cameron and, and the team for uh, letting me come and, and film you guys. It was a pretty chaotic filming experience because I was like timing up posting an episode as well as just showing up with two hours before my flight. The Rangeview team was completely understanding of this and very, very kind. So thank you guys for being so accommodating in my kind of chaos that day. I think it's super cool what they're building now but in the future too. Yeah, I can't wait to just see more American dynamism companies and companies that have crazy big ideas that are tackling them, but also doing them in a, in a realistic, methodical, kind of piecemeal method. Thank you so much again for helping get me here to the end of season one. I can't believe we're here. This is so exciting. And I can't wait to keep building the show with you. Thank you for watching. Keep on building the future. And I will see you next week for the season finale of the first season of S3.